uh, Mr. Walter, uh, Walter, uh, thank you for being here. And, and first, let me preface this by saying I understand that you came in during some extremely difficult circumstances, and, and your job is extremely difficult. Um, but over and over again during your testimony today, you have uh, you have made the statement, and it's in your written statement here, where it says we are working to restore people's credibility in the MTA and be good stewards of public money. In other words, we must make every dollar count. Yes. Unfortunately, I assure you that the folks in Suffolk County are far, far from believing that statement, um, because we just we have questions that there are no answers to. Here's the question I get the most, and I understand this was before you you, you arrived. But just four or five years ago, we had a surplus of close to a billion dollars, and now we're 900 million in the hole in four or five years. Where did it go? What happened? Um, as you know, I wasn't here four or five mm -hmm. years ago, but I can give you a, a, a broad sense of what has happened over that, over that period of time. Um, I think if you look at uh, the revenue side of the MTA's picture, um, you will see that the MTA is funded um, by fares as the largest portion of it and then by a series of dedicated taxes. Um, most of those dedicated taxes are transaction taxes, uh, particularly taxes uh, on real estate have been very volatile and susceptible to the economy. Mm -hmm. And so the, the money's coming to the MTA um, during the, the economic downturn um, have dried up quite, quite considerably. Um, anyone who walks through New York right now uh, will notice, of course, um, that the thing that's completely missing from the New York skyline are cranes. Um, there is no construction activity taking place. There is no new building taking place. And, and one of the things that that implies as well is that there, the real estate transactions have not been, uh, have not been taking place. Um, I also think that one can't miss the fact that the cost structure in many ways has become untenable. So uh, if we look, for example, over the last decade, um, the cost of inflation has been about 2.7%. The MTA's cost of pensions uh, has risen by over 18% a year, a year. Um, and so the result that, that one looks at is that the fixed cost of doing our business continue to rise in the way that we're doing that. We could have a similar discussion about medical care. We could have a similar discussion about debt service, uh, all of which become built into the MTA's cost structure uh, and need to be supported. Now, I know the legislature and the governor are considering certain proposals to be able to deal and ideas to be able to deal with that. Uh, hopefully, some solutions will come uh, to pass. Um, but even in the case of the Long Island Railroad, I might point out that some of the, action, some of the structure for the Long Island Railroad uh, is also outside of your control because the railroads are under federal law uh, and therefore fall outside of the, the boundary. So even if the state enacts new pension reform legislation, it will not directly affect uh, the Long Island Railroad or, or Metro North for that matter. So we've seen both things happen simultaneously. We've seen an escalation of fixed costs and we've seen a, a reduction in the expected value of certain resources that would be coming even the payroll mobility tax, which has been discussed so far, um, has, is significantly below what had been the estimate for those taxes that would be, uh, that would be received. Um, my point about this is that, that we've committed ourselves to driving at the things that we can deal with. Um, and, and that's my point about what we've been trying to do. And, and uh, I would not take away from the fact that there are things that you can do uh, as a body to help. Uh, there are statutory provisions that would, that would indeed reduce costs if we can change some of that. There are places in which uh, pension reform would help uh, as a means of being able to do these. So uh, you know, I, I would look to work cooperatively to be able to find ways to continue to reduce our cost structure. Well, let me say that legislatively, the first thing I would do is eliminate the payroll tax, but that's just me. Um, in echoing Senator Larkin and, and something, some things that he said as far as the businesses um, and the impact, everything you stated there also affected business, small businesses, every business. In fact, you brought up the real estate market. But yet realtors in Suffolk County and real estate brokers in Suffolk County not only are getting hit with a terrible market, then they get hit with a payroll tax where they're having to foot the bill for this. The problem 
is fundamental more than anything else. This is where the anger rises in myself and my constituents here in that we don't see uh, things being as efficient as they could. You brought up pension costs. There was a, a, an audit done by the state comptroller, found over $600 million in unauthorized overtime. Well, we know where some of that unauthorized overtime was going. It was going to, to boost the pensions. Give you an example. 2009, third highest paid person in the MTA is a car repairman with a salary of about $64,000, yet brings home well over $200,000 that year. I will guarantee you that if we look it up, he was within three years of retiring. That's how we can control pension costs without legislative action, is simply buckling down and denying these unauthorized overtime and tightening the belt a little bit. You're right, when you mentioned overtime before, you said that sometimes it does benefit. In that case, it doesn't. That's ridiculous. And that's not a loan example. There are many examples of this. 600 million in unauthorized overtime. Thank you. I'll take you off. Assemblyman, I'm not disagreeing with your point about buckling down in overtime. As I said, we're already buckling down in overtime. Um, so I, I appreciate the point that you're, uh, I appreciate the point that you're making. I understand also you are taking steps moving forward here. My frustration again is the fact that the first step that was taken in 2009 was we need more money, we need more revenue, help us out. Let's impose a tax. Well, as, uh, as one of the Assemblywoman Maliotakis had mentioned earlier, let me see, there's a, there's a payroll tax, there's a tax uh, uh, dedicated to the MTA on my cell phone bill, uh, phone bills, when I register my car, on driver's license, I mean, everywhere we turn around. It's not a revenue problem, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's a combination of revenue and expenditures and it's a fact that we have to tighten up. There were a few preliminary audits done last year by the Comptroller's Office, and, and I know they're done annually. It's amazing that each one of them found millions of dollars in problems. You mentioned the real estate and uh, some of the advertising, un, uh, unrecognized advertising revenue. There was revenue there that could have been had that wasn't. Again, I'm gonna say that I, I understand that you are taking steps now, but it's kind of, you know, the horse is out of the barn kind of thing, to the, to the people in Suffolk County that are paying this payroll tax. To Brookhaven Memorial Hospital, you had mentioned earlier in your testimony about um, unforeseen events that have, that have come up. You talk about an unforeseen event for Brookhaven Memorial Hospital it was 2009 when they get hit with a $400,000 payroll tax that they didn't see coming. The next year is a full year, it goes up to $600,000. This is a hospital, and this is just one example. We've got not-for-profits, we've got you know, small businesses. That was an unforeseen for circumstance for them during these tough economic times. And you can understand the frustration when we hear things about a billion-dollar surplus turning into a close to billion-dollar deficit. You can understand the frustration when we hear about $600 million in unauthorized overtime. Let me ask you this. I, I, go, go ahead. I, j just to correct the point, I don't think you saw an audit that says $600 million in an audit is overtime in a year. The, the entire overtime budget of the MTA is approximately $500 million. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of the specifics, but I don't want to leave you with that. I don't want to leave that impression. Um, it's $478 million is the entire overtime budget for the MTA for this, for this year. But you agree that the, the state uh, um, I believe that controller I be, did find I it. agree that the state controller has made some recommendations in terms of overtime. I believe we are also making recommendations mm -hmm. in overtime. And to assure you, we are working cooperatively with the state controller to try to be able to ensure that we are able to, to control this as best as possible. I'm glad you said that. And I'll tell you why. It's because I've been calling for the state comptroller, and you had mentioned it, and Assembly, uh, Assemblyman McDonough had, had brought it up, a, fis a uh, forensic audit. Would you be open? Would you recommend that the state comptroller do a comprehensive forensic audit of the entire M MTA? Um, I believe the comptroller has an entire program of audits that, that he is doing with the MTA. How he wishes to engage that is up to him. I have always been supportive of efforts, whatever you mentioned before, the issue of credibility and accountability mm -hmm. at the MTA, I've mentioned it. I have tried, uh, and I do appreciate some of the points that have already been made about this body, to be open and frank in all of my discussions since becoming chairman. I have tried to make sure that the clear, there's a clear basis of decision making that we are publishing. So as painful as it might be to see, for example, 
the service cuts that we put into place last year, we published an unprecedented body of information that explained the ridership on every single one of our bus routes, for example, what the trend in ridership was, what the cost of providing that service was, and to be able to look at this in a transparent and open manner to be able to, to do that. Uh, we've worked across publishing all of our information on the internet so that it's widely accessible to anyone who wants that, that information to be there and not hiding from the difficult decisions that we have to take. Um, I think many people have looked and said that these are the right steps, indeed maybe not the out, maybe not the end, but the right steps toward improving the, the, the credibility and accountability of the MTA. I hope you would agree in that, in that sense in the way that we've been doing it. No, it does not correct, as you point out, uh, from your perspective, some of the other issues that are, that are there, um, some of the issues, uh, but again, I, I would be remiss if I did not state the absolute critical importance of the resources that come to the MTA. The MTA payroll tax is $1.4 billion a year. To put that in context, the fair increase that we did at the end of last year was 7.5% was yield was a $400 million increase. The service cuts that we put in place last year were $92 million. The MTA repair tax is 15 times that amount. Um, I do not believe that you can take that resource out of the MTA without having a devastating impact upon the, regional, the region and the regional economy. But see, that's kind of my point right there, is when you make a statement like, I don't believe, I'd be a lot more comfortable if we had forensic audits I mean, comprehensive. You had mentioned the state comptroller does a series of audits. Yes, it, those are preliminary audits. Those are, they are not as comprehensive as, in my opinion, they should be. Because when we're saying that you can't take away $1.4 billion or else we're in trouble, wh where, why, how? I, I have too many questions there that are unanswered. That's a broad statement. That's next week's questions, you mean. <laughs> We just need more details. We need more answers, and, and I, I'd, I'd like to get it on the record if, if, if you would support the state comptroller doing a comprehensive forensic audit of the entire MTA. The choice of a forensic audit is up to the legislature. That is within the statute that has been adopted by the legislature. We are cooperating with all of the audits of the MTA, and will continue to do so. Do you believe that it, it would do be all good? That, uh, may we stop here, and you can find out what he believes later. I didn't really get the answer, but okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.